cycles. Can you talk about the cycles of depression? So with the with the cycles of depression, I mean, it depends on if the person is like definitely if it's if the person has like clinical depression or if they may be like bipolar or something like that. Of course, that's not going to be something that you would just automatically get from the a pandemic because that would be more of like, OK, there was an incident that happened. Yeah. You're adjusting um, like the clinical term would be like an adjustment disorder if you've had these symptoms for a certain period of time as a result of an incident. Um, but if you're looking at like clinical depression, I mean, there's different forms of depression, but a lot of people that cycle through different forms would be like people that are bipolar. So, mm. and, and uh, even in terms of the cycles, it can be different. Like, so you have some people that have like seasonal depression, um, you have like this, like a uh, rapid cycling. So it can look like someone is up one day mm-hmm. and two days later, they're down. Mm-hmm. So like even within the same week, they could be at different points wow. um, or it could even be like for one month, they're fine. They seem to be normal. The next month they're in a deep depression. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you just have people that are for the most part, they, they appear to be normal for the most part for, for a while. And then all of a sudden they'll go into like a deep depression. Wow. So like that's more like major depressive disorder, things mm-hmm. like that. So it's it's really it's a lot of different forms of depression. Yeah. Um, if, if someone thinks that they may be depressed, especially with dealing with like clinical depression, I would definitely recommend that they see a therapist, um, a psych- psychologist or psychiatrist regarding yeah. those things. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This is some good stuff and what to watch out for. Yes, it mm-hmm. is. Um, so let's get into the um, the stages of the grief. Right, right. Yes. So with the with the stages of grief, I'm um, not sure if you ever heard of uh, Kubler Ross, Elizabeth no. Kubler Ross. So basically, she's a psychologist. Um, um, actually, she might be a psychiatrist, but she developed these stages, these five stages of grief, mm-hmm. and. This is actually a, the five, these particular five stages are stages that a lot of therapists use um, when helping their clients to understand what they're going through as a result of, of, of having a loss. Now, it could be a loss of a person, just as well as it could be a loss of a job. Mm. It could be a loss of a relationship. So when we say the stages of grief, I just mm-hmm. want to help you know everybody to understand that it doesn't necessarily have to be a loss of a person. Because normally when we think of grief, we think like we lost we lost someone yeah. that was close to us, but they don't necessarily have. It doesn't have to be a person that we lost. It could be mm-hmm. something that we lost. Like maybe you yeah. were in a relationship for ten years. You thought you were going to be with this person forever, and then suddenly yeah. the relationship ended. You can still go through some of the same stages of grief. Wow. Um, so I'm going to yeah, talk a little bit about, about that, about those stages. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the first, the first stage of grief is denial. Mm-hmm. And so we know what denial is. Basically we're not believing that something actually happened. Yeah. So, um, you know, if this could look like, okay, as soon as the person, maybe as soon as we were informed that that person had passed away, We're like, no, this can't be happening. We may say that like, oh, maybe uh, the person is joking. The person that told us that that person had passed away. It's just that we're, we're really in, we're in complete denial about the fact that we actually lost that person. Or again, like given the other example of losing a job, Mm -hmm. like denial about the job, you know, like, no, they, they probably are going to, you know, keep us on or something like that. So it can look like different things depending on the situation, but basically you're denying that the incident actually happened. And what I want to point out is that this is not necessarily a bad thing that you're denying it in a, it, when it first happened, when you're first given the information. It's really just our, our body's way of protecting ourselves, mm-hmm. like our mind's way of trying to cope with that initial shock of yeah. hearing something traumatic. Yeah. And so that's really what this is all about. And actually, with that being said, all of the stages of grief, we're talking about Kubler Ross's stages of grief today, but there, if you go online, there's so many other people that have their own concepts of the stages of grief, but they pretty much follow the same type of concepts or ideas. Um, but I do want to point out that just because there are certain stages and there are stages like one through five, 
but you don't have to go through each stage uh, just like the next person. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Mm -hmm. is it possible to stay stuck at that first stage? It is definitely possible. Yes, it is. And and not even just the first stage. Mm. It's possible to to stay stuck in any of the stages. Any of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh Okay. Just as well as it's possible to go back and forth through the stages. So like you started with the first one, you got through the second one, you stayed in the third one forever. Then you went back to the second one. Um, And I would say probably more so than anything, there could be situations that come up that could be triggers Mm -hmm. for you that could possibly send you back into Mm -hmm. any of those other stages. But just know, yes, you can stay stuck in a particular stage. Um, And it's okay to go through any of those stages. That's the first thing I really want people to know that it's okay to, this, this is really just like psychologists coming up with a way for us to understand yeah. what we're going through because it just human nature when we're able to put a label on something mm-hmm. or to be able to define something that actually helps us to cope okay. with what we're going through so just having like okay now i know that i'm going through this or these things when i was saying this or doing that that was because i was in denial mm-hmm. during that time and it helps to normalize it so we know that we're going through this thing or we're not going through this thing but we're not the only ones. There's yeah. a lot of people that go through these things. Whenever we're able to normalize things like that, in general, it helps us to cope with. Um, it helps us to cope with the loss. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. So the the next stage of of grief is anger, mm-hmm. and so we know what anger is. And like I talked about earlier, the that anger and that depression can kind of be related as well. So if you think about it in those terms. When you've lost someone, you've now come to grips with the fact that it actually happened. Mm -hmm. You might be sad. And that would be a normal response, right? Yeah. So some people, because of all the sadness and those type of elements to it, they may go into that anger, Mm -hmm. right? Where we're angry that it happened. And it could be so many different ways that we express that anger. Like maybe we might be, you know, angry with ourselves. Maybe we're, we're angry with everyone else around us. Maybe, um, and it could be, we went through this thing. Why doesn't everybody else around us go through this thing? Yeah. Um, that we've, that we've gone through. So it could be different things that we are, we're experiencing as it relates to anger, but definitely, Anger is one of those, those signs um, or those, those, those signals of, of grief. And again, you can stay in there for a long time. Some people do actually stay in this, that stage exactly. for a long time. And that, that anger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, why would someone be angry at themselves? Because they're blaming themselves. Mm. Now they could be blaming them for blaming themselves for maybe what they felt like they didn't get to do. Okay. While the person was alive, they could even be blaming themselves for thinking that um, it was something that they could have done differently, mm-hmm. but they didn't do it. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of some some stages of grief talk about guilt mm-hmm. as well. So that's yeah. where that would kind of play in as well. Like talking about like, I feel guilty because I didn't do this thing. But what could be coupled with that is anger, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm blaming myself or I should have done something different, but I wasn't able to do it. And mm-hmm. it could be related to what happened and how the loss came about. And it could or it could be related to the fact that they didn't get to do something before with that person or for that person before they actually lost. Um, yeah. That yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I think about that, too, because like my mom passed last year. And we were planning a trip uh, for Christmas, you know, but she didn't make it. She passed so fast. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't angry at myself, but it was like, I really did want to go on that trip. I was looking forward to it because it's so mm-hmm. nice and peaceful. Mm-hmm. And that would have been our time to um, spend together because she had been wanting to get with me, you know, like, let's do this, let's do that. But I was so busy, 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 you know, working 
uh, busy trying to, you know, do the entrepreneurial thing, you know, ministry, just busy and not taking that time. So I would like to encourage our viewers, you know, if you do have relatives that are reaching out to you uh, that want to spend time with you, put them on your calendar, spend that time because we just don't know when we are leaving this place. We just don't know. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I def don't take it for granted. Don't yeah. take anybody in your life for granted because we just yeah. never know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the that's that third stage of grief has to do with bargaining. Mm -hmm. And so with bargaining, we're just like trying to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And it can look different. Um, like let's say if someone uh, is has a terminal disease mm -hmm. and they may be the bargaining might look like trying to plead to God mm -hmm. that, you know, God, if you could just take this away from me, if you could just heal me, I promise, like I'll do what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. I'll yeah. serve you. Like that could, it could look like that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it can look at, it can look like different things, but the bargaining is just like that, the way that we rationalize, uh, what's happening or what, what, what has already happening, already happened, mm -hmm. you know, as a result of that loss. So, you know, we're going to change our lives around, or mm -hmm. we're going to try to do this differently. So you're, you're trying to, you're trying to come to grips with what has happened or what didn't happen. And it's like your way of your mind's way of trying to like put it all together. Yeah. Bring trying to buy yourself some time. Mm -hmm. Time is running out and bargaining. Yeah. With God. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm. So that the next stage um, that people go through is depression. So we talked about how anger could be connected to that, but this is the stage that a lot of people, um, when they really set into that depression, uh, because you've already been through the denial, you've already kind of like real, maybe you've gone through that period of um, trying to figure out or work something out in your mind. But at this point, it's like people realize that, you know what, this is, this is it. Like this is whatever that loss is, this is what it is. Yeah. And so now you have to decide how you're going to live with losing that thing. And that's not always a, a great place to be. It's not always an easy place, I should say, to be and to go through. Yeah. Now that you are um, really coming to grips with like, this is what has happened. And now this is my life mm -hmm. without this person, yeah. without this thing. Um, and if you don't have the support systems in place, if you don't have the coping mechanisms in place, you can talk about staying in a stage. You can really stay in this stage for a long time. If you don't have those yeah, things in place system. to help you to get through. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. about like after the funeral is over and you mm -hmm. have to go back home, you know, and some time goes by. It's like it's very important to check in on family members. Yeah. 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 It's exactly. actually dif difficult as well, you know, you know, having to clean out the clothing, you know, and get things in order and rearrange things. So that can be depressing in itself having to go mm -hmm. back and do that yeah yeah again the reason why the support system is so important because nobody should really have to go through that alone yeah like yeah. this like you say like after the funeral and cleaning things out like that is a difficult process to go through yeah oh so, and it's gonna it's like you're constantly being triggered and reminded mm -hmm. of those things and nobody should have to go through that alone yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So that, so the last stage is acceptance. And when we say acceptance, we don't mean that you get over it. Mm -hmm. We don't mean, and this is, I want to make this a point because a lot of times what makes people make it difficult for people to go through the stages or even to allow themselves self to like process what's happening is because they feel like if they accept it, then it's as if that person doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. It's as if they're completely losing that person. And um, we don't want to feel like that. You know, mm -hmm. we want to hold on to that thing that we love so dearly or that person that we love so dearly. So 
what acceptance really is, is just coming to a place within yourself where you acknowledge what has happened. Mm -hmm. You acknowledge that it's okay to feel. Yeah. You, you recognize that you're going to have some good days and you're going to have some days that may not be too great. Yeah. But that you have what you need internally and also externally to get through it. Yeah. All of and those emotions are good to have. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's healthy. Like God yeah. made us with these emotions. Right, right. It gave us the ability to cry. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we shouldn't be afraid. Like if 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 not everybody cries, but if you need to cry, it's okay to cry. Yeah, let it out. Yes. Yeah, let it out. However it is that you need to to let it out. Some people just let things out by like journaling. That's another another uh strategy that I, I have people do as well, because sometimes you just can't say it. Yeah, you can't yeah. Speak it, you yeah. know, but you can write about it. Right, right. You can write about how much that person melt meant to you. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, meant to you. And you can write about like ways that things that you remember about them. Mm -hmm. And you know, things that you could learn and that you've gleaned from the relationship and how yeah. you can use the things that you've established from knowing that person for the future. Yeah. Like yeah. how you want to continue to carry them in that yeah. that relationship you had like journaling is a great way to do that yeah yeah they will always be with you um i think about my mom every day um especially if i'm cleaning up something mm -hmm. cleaning mm -hmm. was her thing so <laughs> like if i'm walking through my house cleaning up something she's on my mind mm -hmm. and even when i look in the mirror every day i look just like my mom Wow. So they're always with you. Those memories always mm -hmm. with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're always with you. And those are, those are things that you can do to work towards acceptance, you know? So we're accepting, we're just accepting that it happened. We're not letting go of the person in our right. hearts. Right. You know, right. there's ways that we can continue to, um, to respect them, to honor them. Mm -hmm. And those are things that help you to, to, to work towards acceptance, like be it, you know, you celebrate the birth, the birthday, every time it comes around, just remembering yes. their, their lives, yes. um, whatever it is, you write a poem to them, mm -hmm. you know, those are ways that you work through and work yes. towards acceptance. Yep. And other ways to honor their memory is like, maybe they were part of an organization. I mean, yeah, you're involved in that, and every year you honor them that way. So there are things to keep their memory alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually a great point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, so those are the five stages of grief. Yes, awesome, awesome. Now you mentioned triggers um, a while back. Do triggers ever go away? I'm going to say no. Okay. And the reason why I'm going to say no is because. Triggers typically come from our environment and it would be great if we can control what happens in our environment, but mm -hmm. we can't. Mm -hmm. Now, what can change is, and what, what we can, can have, what we can have more control over is the way we respond mm -hmm. to the triggers. Oh, okay. Um, and then the more you work through like some of the things we talked about today, the less, um, I guess, sensitive you might become to yeah. some of those triggers. Yeah. You know, so as soon as someone says, like, if you lost someone and someone says their name, you it, maybe initially you would have to just leave the room. Yeah. Over time, and as you continue to work towards, you know, all those things we talked about today, you might be able to hear their name mm -hmm. and not have to leave the room. Right, right. You know, you, you learn the skills to be able to process it within yourself so that it doesn't have that, that heavy control mm -hmm. over you. So you can still continue to live your life. Yeah. Even though you, you might see things that remind you or kind of, you see, maybe you see a flower and that represents that person. You may feel something, but yeah. you will be able to get to a point where you can still go throughout the rest of your day as opposed to maybe when it first happened, you saw that flower and then you had to leave work because you just could not, you know, mm -hmm. you couldn't keep it together. Yeah. So you yeah. just learn, you learn uh, strategies 
to, to, to manage the, the triggers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's like an internal warning mm -hmm. that's external that triggers an internal warning. Internal. Mm -hmm. And it makes you feel very uncomfortable. So are they thinking like, I'm in danger? Or it takes them back to a painful place. Well, it depends on that. That question really can be answered in what type of trauma we're talking about. So if we're talking about the, the first part, the first way that I just answered that question is just mainly dealing with um, like having a loss. Yes. But if you're talking about a trauma on top of that loss, mm. that can look very different because you're talking, it may be the person lost their um, loved one violently. Yeah. So if they lost their loved one in a violent way, yeah, if they see something, hear something, smell something that reminded them of that event in which it happened, yeah. Yeah. that can trigger fear. Yeah. It can trigger anxiety. Mm. Like it can go along with all of those things. If you lost, if you lost someone in a, in a, a violent way, like whatever, in whatever way that you experience that trauma, if you have a trigger, it can it can go back to that, that initial feeling. Wow. And that's what I work on a lot with like, when I work with my uh, trauma clients or people that have experienced trauma is they may not just be coming in for grief, but they could have had all different kinds of traumas, different yeah. things that happened to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. I'm just thinking about my city right now when I'm in Rochester, New York, and it seems like someone is getting killed every mm. day. So there's a lot of trauma going on yep. in that city. Yeah, the a lot family of the people are seeing yeah. it. Yeah, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so how can the people get in touch with you, my dear? <laughs> <laughs> so people can get in touch with me in different ways. Um, definitely, you can follow me on Instagram. Um, I'm Keisha as therapist and coach. Um, on on Instagram, or you can you can find me on Facebook with my peaceful mental health counseling um, page. Or if you are a therapist and you're looking to start your own practice, and you can definitely follow me on um, my private practice blueprint. We I have a group there where we work with a lot of therapists and trying to help therapists to start their own profitable practice. Um, so those are ways that you can reach out. To me, of course, you can also go to my website, mm -hmm. and that's www.peacefieldcs.com. So you can follow me and reach out to me there. Amen. Amen. I met Keisha uh, last year, was yeah. it? We were in the I think course. it was last year. <laughs> <laughs> Learning how to get these courses going. And, you know, we went through it. Uh, a few months later, we got those courses going. <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, something else I want to talk about though, uh, before we go about the grief, how important is it to be prepared? You know, like if something does happen as far mm -hmm. as like the final arrangements, because sometimes things happen so sudden, we don't know their, uh, their last wishes. We don't know where those important documents are. So it's mm -hmm. like, how important it is to have those conversations with your family members about your last wishes? I mean, honestly, I think that is, is super important. And um, because we're so afraid of just the idea of death, this is a reason why many people don't have these conversations. Yeah. Um, but what I have definitely seen and I've heard from other people is that, you know, when you hear a lot about the, the family drama and things that are happening, um, once someone passes away, a lot of people, there's a lot of confusion, mm -hmm. um, a lot of just like misunderstandings. Um, and a lot of those things are, could have been like really taken care of or addressed had the conversation been had before they lost the person. So I would say like, don't be afraid of having a conversation just like we have life insurance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people are like, I don't want to get life insurance because I don't want anything, but you getting life insurance is not going to you know, say whether or not you're going to pass away. But right. if you care about people in your mm -hmm. life, then that's what you have to think about. If I were not here, no matter what, you know, God forbid, we want to all live long, but right. if something were to happen, especially if you have children, would you yeah. 
want them to have to be suffering? Right. Would you want them to have to be trying to find this money to bury you? Or mm. even if it's like, okay, if they live in a home, would you want them to have to leave the home mm. if they were like depending on you or to get basic food? This is the way that you can support your family even after you're gone. By Amen. simply just having these conversations and making sure that Amen. things are in order. Amen. Amen. You know, we're all here. We love living, but we are not going to be here, you know, forever. And it is important for us to prepare uh, for when we do make that transition um, in life. Mm -hmm. uh, very important. And as you just stated, that life insurance policy, it is for our loved ones. Mm -hmm. So they can handle the business side of things because there will be things that they have to take care of, you know, when you leave here. Yeah. 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 Yep. Very important. All right, my dear. Um, I'm going to uh, close this out right here. Okay. I enjoyed our conversation on today. Mm -hmm. I am definitely going to have you back to discuss another topic. Okay. Um, really enjoyed it. it. Yes, yes. Thank you so much um, for being here on today. And to my uh, my viewing audience, uh, just be mindful of your you know your loved ones. Reach out if you don't have a circle, get a circle. Reach out to someone to let them know you know where certain items are in your home. If something does happen, mm. it's always best to be prepared instead of unprepared. And as always, if you truly desire to become a new you, you can if you want to, but you must do the work. Until next time, have an awesome day. Bye-bye. Say so. I have been chosen by God to declare you must expose your truth in order to be free. Say so. That's right. I proclaim the praises of God that he will set you absolutely free if you want it. You care more about your feelings, protecting the family image, the defunction, the gener generational curse on the bloodline than the innocence of the children. You are in a silent agreement with darkness instead of bringing it to the light and